I've missed this place, I've got to admit. I have missed home. Um, I have not missed the flies, though. Um, just like a few minutes ago, I was filming, and after I just stopped filming, I swallowed a fly, and it was awful because, like, the fly was, um, like... I, I, op- I like it went into the back of my, it like flew into my throat and then it was like just sitting there and I opened my mouth like come on fly out fly out you dumb cunt and eventually it gets to a point where it's like alright I just kind of have to swallow you now but I do love this place I do love being back the sun's setting just over there so I can't really look in that direction like I did just then otherwise I'll burn my cornea so when you think about Indo-European languages the first thing you think about is probably not tone no Indo-European languages don't have tone guess what some of them have developed tone if you don't know what tone is, it's basically the distinction of words not based off of, you know, the consonants and vowels in them necessarily, but also based off of the pitch of the word. Um, not just the pure pitch, but rather the, um, usually, the contour of the pitch or the pitch of a certain syllable relative to the pitches of other syllables in the same sentence. There's the classic example of those um, four Chinese words. Um, ma, 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 ma. Oh shit, my PC is running low! I don't know how that happened. I made sure, like, when I was recording the other video that my computer had full charge. I don't know how it decided to just turn off and not have any battery anymore. Anyway, I'm recording on my phone for this video, so have fun with that. So the classic examples of words you tell apart based off of tone are the four Chinese words, which use the four tones of Chinese. I don't know what any of those words mean, but... So yeah, languages that tell words apart based off of their pitch and the contour of their pitch are called tonal. Um, and one of these languages is, is Mandarin Chinese. There's also others like a Vietnamese, um, a lot of uh, South Southern African languages, which we'll get to in a minute. And of course, the Indo-European language Punjabi. The, the reason this is weird is because Punjabi is a member of the Indo-European language family, the same language family that has Italian, German, Greek, um, Swedish, Russian, Hindi, um, Farsi, all of those languages. They're all Indo-European, and uh, the number of tonal languages in that group is tiny. There's only a few, and Punjabi is one of them. But within the Indo-European language group, there is still um, pitch accent. Pitch accent is different from tone. Um, in tone, pitch um, tells the difference between words on the basis of syllables. So each individual syllable has its own inherent tone. Whereas in pitch accent languages, it happens on, not on the basis of syllables, but on the basis of words. And of course it's not that simple, but that's kind of the main distinction. Much more, a lot, and actually, and actually a fair lot, and actually a fair amount of Indo-European languages have pitch accent, you know, Swedish, Norwegian, um, I think ancient Greek had it, um, I think Latvian as well. Plenty of Indo-European languages have pitch accent, but not that many have tone, true tone. Punjabi is one of the only Indo-European languages with pure tone. Limburgish is also debatably um, a possessor of tone, and that's because, you know, the barrier of tone and pitch accent is so fuzzy. Um, it, some people say it has pitch accent, others say it has tone. It comes from the Germanic languages, so languages like German, Swedish, English, and the other Germanic languages that use pitch to contrast words, i.e. use it contrastively, um, you know, Swedish, Norwegian, they all use pitch accent rather than tone. And so most people would say that Limburgish uses pi pitch accent, but there's definitely an argument to be made that says it uses tone. Either way, the use of tone in Indo-European languages is pretty rare and pretty interesting, especially in Germanic languages. There's only one that debatably has it, and that's Limburgish. But there is one language that in recent decades has begun to develop tone, and that language is Afrikaans. So how do languages gain tone? How do you go from not distinguishing words based off of pitch to distinguishing words based off of pitch? And it usually comes from other sounds around them. For example, in Punjabi, how tone developed was that it had three sets, I think, three sets of consonants. They had however many um, different types of stop. English has two, voiced and voiceless, so p, b, t, d, k, g. Punjabi had this many. And one of these types of stop was the murmured stop, which basically was a voiced consonant with a little puff of voiced air afterwards. You would kind of murmur the vowel after the stop, hence the name murmured stops. But eventually, the difference between murmured stops and voiced stops started to deteriorate, and people started to pronounce voiced and murmured stops the same. But there would still be a difference. If there was a murmured stop at the start of a word, then the vowel immediately after that murmured stop would 
decrease in pitch. It wouldn't be murmured anymore, but it would have a low pitch. It would have a lower pitch than the rest of the syllables around it. And then if there was a murmured stop at the end of a word, it would get a, the vowel would get a high pitch. And so you ended up instead of, a f instead of this many number of stops, you then had this many number of stops, but you had gained two tones, high and low. And so Punjabi now has three tones, low, mid-tone, which is the tones of all the vowels that didn't have murmured stops around them, and then high tone. And when a language gains tones like this, it's called tonogenesis. And a little fun fact, when a, when a language loses its tones, that's called tonoexodus. Um, the linguistic community still hasn't had any news about Tono Leviticus yet, but we're waiting on that one. One place you can see tonogenesis in action is Korea, um, South Korea. Korean has three sets of stops. It has fortis, lenis, and aspirated. But what's happening in South Korean Korean is that the vowels after each of these different category of stop um, are gaining their own independent pitch. Um, and less and less are stops being told apart by, you know, voiced, voiceless, aspirated, and they're more being told apart by the pitch of the vowel that follows them. In places like Seoul, people don't even make any audible distinction between lenis and aspirated consonants anymore. It's purely on the basis of the tone of the vowel afterwards. And this is a pretty recent sound change. It was first heard in women born in the 1950s, and nowadays young people in Korea pretty much all have this. And this brings us to Afrikaans. Afrikaans and Dutch have been, you know, slowly diverging from each other ever since Dutch ended up being spoken in South Africa. My dog got out of the yard. What the hell? You little bastard. You're trying to sabotage me, aren't you, with your cuteness? You're trying to get me. You're trying to get me to give you love, aren't you? Adorable piece of shit. But Afrikaans is now developing a whole new difference from Dutch, which makes it really unique. Afrikaans is developing tone, and it's one of the few Indo-European Indo languages and one of the very few Germanic languages which has proper tone. It doesn't quite have it yet, but it's in development, and I could see, you know, within a few decades it would be a fully tonal language. Basically Afrikaans, just like English, 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 just like English has two sets of stops. It has voiced and voiceless. But at the starts of words, that dichotomy is being neutralized. In other words, people aren't really telling the difference between voiced and voiceless at the start of a word anymore, not at least in the consonant. Instead, the distinction is made using the vowel that comes after the consonant. If it comes after a voiceless vowel, it has a high tone, and if it comes after a voiced vowel, it has a low tone. A few studies have been done this, and the general state of Afrikaans at the moment, um, in South Africa that is, seems to be that anywhere in a word, the difference between voiced and voiceless stop is accompanied by a difference in the pitch of the vowel. But what makes this true tone and not just some allophonic whimsy is that uh, at the starts of words, people aren't actually telling the difference between the two types of consonant at all anymore, at least not young people, old people still do, but young people have switched to relying just on the pitches of the vowels to distinguish them, rather than the actual quality of the stops. But the thing is, it's not truly tonal yet, because in the middle of words, there's still a difference between voiced and voiceless. At the starts of words, all the stops are voiceless, but in the middle of words, they can be either voiced or voiceless, which means that the difference is still held. There is still a difference between the consonants themselves. If the distinction was held entirely in the pitch of the vowels, then we could call Afrikaans a truly tonal language. But since there's still some, you know, responsibility on the consonants uh, to tell the difference, uh, then it's not truly tonal yet. In a hundred years time, people might not tell the difference between voiced and voiceless at all. They might just be consonants, you know, and the pitch of the vowels after each consonant is what carries that same distinction. And you might be asking, why is this happening? Why is Afrikaans suddenly developing tone? And scientists reckon it's because all of the neighboring languages, the Bantu languages, languages like Zulu and Hausa, all of those languages, I'm sorry, did I scare you? All of those languages make distinctions based off of tone. And so they reckon it's the influence of these tonal languages which Afrikaans is surrounded by that is making Afrikaans turn tonal. So in conclusion, did I scare you again? Tonality is very rare in Indo-European languages, and especially in Germanic languages, where there's only um, one language that is definitively maybe tonal, which is Limburgish. And that's why it's so interesting that Afrikaans is slowly developing tone and slowly becoming a tonal Germanic language. At the moment, it's still not tonal, not fully at least, 
but in the future, who knows? People born in 2023 might end up using a completely tonal version of Afrikaans. All right, I don't think that there's any mosquitoes out this time of year, which is great. Also, the flies are gone. I should have come out and filmed now. I don't know why I waited so long. I've sabotaged myself, I have. I come out after all of the flies have gone home and now there's no flies and the first the first half of my recording is is all filled with what is that is all filled with flies and then as soon as it gets dark and i might all right time to pack up head inside the flies go away and there's no fly problem anymore so this is bullshit risky it's bullshit you're so adorable